first, let's dive into the Seattle home series, won by the Chicago Huntsman. Couple changes there. Prestini comes in one for one with the new team so far. Chicago Huntsman victorious. They join the two chip club. Yes, Katie, they are top of the standings. They might have one more series played than the other two to in the top three. But how did they look? How did the Chicago Huntsmen look in your opinion? And are they now worthy of being in the top three, top two conversation? Yes, top three, certainly. They looked fantastic. They looked rejuvenated. You could tell clearly that it was a chemistry issue with Gunless. Pristini comes in, and first off, huge props to Pristini for being on the bench for a while, for not playing in a competitive setting for a while, and coming into this and excelling. He played yeah. so well for Chicago, being able to integrate into their play style and how they work. I think it was phenomenal out of Pristini what he was able to bring to this team. And of course, you have the fantastic storyline of our cities and Pristini, the twins back together. They went back to back last year in playoffs and champs, and then they split apart. And then when they finally come back together for the first time at their first tournament, they take it all the way to the grand finals and win the whole thing. So I think, yes, Chicago looked incredible. I wouldn't put them above Dallas or Atlanta in my rankings. Mm -hmm. It would still be Dallas, Atlanta, but then Chicago, absolutely right back up there in the top three. They looked so good. So, Emily, yeah. Chicago lead the way with 180 points. They do have one more event played than Atlanta and Dallas, who are 170 and 150, respectively. Uh, but, yes, please, I want to hear what you think about uh, this top three and Chicago's performances as well. I mean, I think the most uh, formidable or, like, scary thing for the FaZe and Dallas looking at this team is, like, I don't even think they performed as well as they possibly could later on. Like, uh -huh. even watching even watching their first series to finals, the team, like, you could see their chemistry increasing throughout the tournament, which is kind of insane to watch. Um, you saw a lot of classic, like, kind of Pristini running out, uh, you know, in, fr in front of the team. Um, like, we saw from him when he was on United. Um, this just looked like, I don't know, it was just, it was really, really great to, to see because um, this is something that like we've, we've watched Pristini and kind of be on the bench and be like, yes, uh, you know, I had all these mental health issues, but I really want to come back. Um, and this just seems like such a better environment for him, whether it's because he's with our cities or not. Um, obviously I think that has something to do with it, but I also think it was kind of incredible about how he could just immediately slot onto this team and have that chemistry. Um, and like I said, I think the, I honestly think the scariest thing is that I don't even think this team is operating at like what would, what would hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I would still, I agree with Katie. I still put them despite the points total. I actually still have Dallas one, Atlanta two, Chicago three. Um, but that can change really quickly mm -hmm. depending on their next performance. So and I think Arda to that point really quick, just to go off of that. I think Chicago also looked excited to play. Yes. Looked at their yeah. player cams and they looked excited to be there. And also shout out to Formal. Formal had an incredible performance for his team. So we talk a lot about Pristini, but I don't I don't want it to go unknown that Formal had an incredible weekend. And Scum himself had some incredible mm -hmm. 1v2 clutches on S and D's to secure a couple wins for them there. So. It, it felt like Prist so Pristini, obviously, and he never really was in his career, right? He wasn't a statistical monster this weekend. Believe no. me, my fantasy draft will tell you exactly that <laughs> since I have Pristini in my draft. But, like, he did all the little things, the intangibles, whether it was the chemistry of the team or whether it was all the, you know, grinding the it out man. moments in the yeah. game. Yeah, like, he was there when he needed to be and did things for the team that overall made them better. So... Do you see this, uh, before we move on from the Huntsman, do you see this being a good long-term play? Do you think that this will have long-term effects here such that uh, Prestini will be a great permanent fit for this team? Yes. Yeah. Short answer, yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great setup, right? Because you have Skunk, Formal, Arcities, and then you have, like, uh, I would put Envoy in kind of a similar category as Prestini, where sometimes he's not going to be putting up insane numbers, but he's just like really, really smart about how he wants to play the game and what he can do for the team. Um, this is a really, really good setup. If you just look at like the strengths of each of these players individually. Um, and again, they, they haven't even met like what I think is close to their ceiling. So yeah. other teams that uh, had impressive performances, the London Royal Ravens, uh, mm -hmm. they 
changed a little bit as well. Zero joins in. They got to be happy. Well, at least Zero has to be happy with the revenge match, getting that 3-0 over, over his former team, the Subliners, even though he hasn't been playing for a very long time. Was it impressive to you that Zero was able to seamlessly come into this lineup, haven't, hasn't had many reps in quite a while at this level, especially playing online? And I mean, for all intents and purposes, he looked really good. Like he was someone that people were talking about a lot this weekend. And this team, uh, Emily, did look really good this weekend. Yeah, so you almost had it, right? Like you you were the one that called the London Royal Ravens as like the the upset, <laughs> like dark horse pick to take the entire thing. Um, I think this is another example of someone coming in and and slotting in really well because when we are like uh when I've talked about the Royal Ravens previously, my problem with them was never the like individual performances of like Weskin and Scraps, for example, right? But it was that they were never able to turn a lot of those statistically insane performances from some of their individual players into actual wins. And uh, with Zero, we saw that finally happening. Um, this team looked, I don't think they looked as cohesive as the Huntsman. And I still feel like I don't really have as good of a handle on like how they want to play as a unit. Um, but again, I think we saw them kind of increasing in synergy uh, and increasing their performance throughout this event as well. Um, if Especially if you take a look at, for example, their first S&D on Piccadilly, which was like, woof, uh, to, to some of their final maps. Um, you just see like a really marked improvement in how they performed just within this one tournament. So I'm, re I'm also really looking forward to seeing them with more practice together as a team. Is this yeah, a one-off, Katie, or is this something that they can replicate? Uh, I think it's something they could replicate. I imagine we will see something. So, um, Pristini obviously hadn't played with Chicago before, but he played with his brother for a long time. And mm -hmm. Zero hadn't played with London before, but he's played with Scraps and members of that mm -hmm. team before. So, while he wasn't familiar necessarily with the team in that specific game, there was familiarity and chemistry between those players themselves. And also, you you get the fire, right, from Pristini. You get the fire from Zero. You want to come back from the bench and prove to people that you shouldn't have been there in the first place for whatever reason. Zero, you know, got his revenge, best served red hot. <laughs> they did so good. So good against New York. Um, but no, I think I think London can absolutely continue to improve. Um, Jared, of course, the one that was, was benched for Zero. And to that note, we've talked about Jared um, throughout this season, and... It, what do you say? He's okay, right? Mm -hmm. He's okay. And in a tournament format like this, okay isn't going to cut it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, yeah, I think London will continue to improve here. But I, I love to see kind of the Toronto moment from Florida for London at this tournament where it's just like, boom, they're here. They look great. Do I think, you know, they're at the level of a Chicago? Clearly not because, um, you know, they fell 3-1 in that grand final and it wasn't necessarily the most nitty gritty close series in the world, um, but no, a marked, marked improvement from London.